Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to be showing you how we did this. <laughs> All right, so to connect the wires to the batteries, we need to put terminals on. So we've got three positive terminals, three negative terminals. So I'm just gonna take these little caps. Cool, and now these bolts just need to be tightened up and then all of the connectors go onto here, underneath this bolt. In between the batteries, we're gonna be using the even bigger 35 mil cable. So before I connect the 16 to the battery, we're gonna have the bigger 35 mil cable just sitting in order of connections, just underneath everything. We had to go cutting a 35 mil wire with these little ones and I've made an absolute pig's ear of it. So off to the shop we go to get some bigger ones. All right, so we're back from the shop and we've got these. So let's have a look, see how they perform. Let's go straight through the insulation. Oh wow, okay, yep. <laughs> so what we were using before was some like really old blunt ones and obviously they weren't great. These were about 18 quid from Tool Station. Yeah, perfect. So instead of using the wire cuts to get the insulation off, someone commented down below to recommend to use like a Stanley knife, which, yeah, obvious. So we've got one of these as well. So we're gonna cut the insulation off the wire. Yeah, so Tash is gonna do that. So as Tash is cutting the insulation off each of the 35 mil wire, I am gonna crimp the connectors. So we've bought another tool and this is to crimp uh, the larger connectors. So this is for the 16, it's quite heavy. And this one here is the 535 and you can see that it's a bit bigger than the 16. So simple enough, put that in the hole and the hole up there is magnetized so it stays in there nice. So if you turn it into the on position, which turns the hydraulic on and then requires a few pumps to get it into position. And you can see that's how it's tight. So if I go off, it just releases like that. So I'll turn it back on, put the connector on there Right, so I've got to do a few more of them. So we made a little bit of a mistake. We put the connectors on and crimped them down before we put the heat shrink on, which meant, so I'll show you, which meant this, we were struggling to put that over the connector. So yeah, luckily we've got some bigger heat shrink that we can do afterwards and it is fitting to the wire, but for this, we bought some specific heat shrink for the 35 mil wire and yeah, it basically wouldn't fit over the connector. So put the heat shrink on first and then crimp your connector. All right, so the 50 amp breaker is now connected to one pos the positive terminal of the battery. Uh, we will get some sort of like clip to like hold out there, but at the moment it's all loose. So we still need to tidy it up. And then we've done one positive uh, to a positive and that's just on there for now. Um, the heat shrink is quite an old one, so we need to let it cool down before we can finish off the rest of the 35. And then with the charge controller, we need to connect that to the negative end of this terminal over here. So we need enough wire. What we're gonna do is like run it around the back there and around the back of these batteries. But that tool is so much easier than what we were using. <laughs> All right, and now again, we just need to cut the insulation off. So the heat shrink goes on first, Callum. <laughs> and then put the two 16s back in the hydraulic press. Put that in the on position. Close it a little bit. So this is a 16 mil cable, 16 mil connector. All right, so you can see that that breaker is currently open, so the circuit is open, which means there's no current flowing into this, so this is off. And then, if I were to do this, ta-da, yes, <laughs> woo, happy days, I'm buzzing.
I'm actually buzzing. All right, cool. So the next thing we're gonna do is wire up our inverter. We've got a 200 amp breaker this time. So the positive needs to come off this battery, feeds into the breaker, and then continues directly to the inverter. And we've got a thousand watt inverter. We might have to upgrade to a bigger one, I'm not sure yet, but we'll, we'll start with just with the 1,000 for now. I think this was about 80, 90 quid. And then the negative goes directly from the inverter and connects to this negative terminal. Right, so we've got this little hair dryer, which I'm gonna plug into the inverter. Switch that on. Hey! <laughs> Power. Happy days. All right, let's continue. All right, and now we're gonna mount the fuse box. So we've got another 50 amp breaker. We'll put the fuse box about here. It's got this little cover that you put on top, uh, that way around. And then, yeah, the breaker. So we'll mount the breaker about here, and then we'll have the positive coming off here, feeding into the breaker. We're gonna use 10 mil cable this time, and then that continues along here at the bottom of the fuse box, so we'll fit the positive there. And all the negative will come off and go straight into there, again using the 10 mil wire. And then these are where all the fuses themselves go. So different sizes for different appliances, like a fan, uh, the lights, etc. All right, and then obviously with the 35 in the 16, we didn't have wire strippers big enough uh, to take the insulation off. But because this is 10, we can go back to using this tool. All right, so there's our breaker connected. And now I've got these little end terminals connectors to put on the end of this wire, which will then this one will connect to the fuse, and I need to put a big one that connects to the battery. So we've got the 10 mil wire on the 50 amp breaker, and then we need to connect this connector. So we needed to find one that was for the 10 mil cable, but the hole, the diameter, big enough to fit on the terminal. So when it, yeah, when it comes to like the electrics, we thought it was going to be a lot more complicated than it was. The most complicated part was just figuring out the connections and buying them exactly what we needed. For our lighting, we're just gonna use these four LED lights. These have come pre-wired, so we actually have to cut this wire, strip it back, to be able to wire it how we need to. I'm just gonna start with connecting the first light to the second light. I'm just gonna cut the wire of the first one, and what we need to do is peel the two apart, just like that, and then I need to strip the wire off of these. There we go. I'm then going to add a female crimp connector on both ends of the wire. Now we've taken the insulation off, I'll just feed the wire through this 1.5 female crimp connector and use a crimping tool to crimp it into place. All right, so now we've added crimp connectors to all four of the lights. We're gonna use these three-way blade terminals to basically wire them all together. This goes in one side and then it allows us to join the lights together basically. So we can have a wire coming out this side going to one light and the wire coming out this side going to the next one. Now we're connecting the female end to the male end which is inside the terminal. Okay, now that we've added all the freeway blade terminals onto the lights, we just need to connect them all together using 1.5 millimeter wire. All right, so this is our light switch. So we literally just need to drill a hole into the cladding where we're putting it, which is gonna be up here on the bulkhead. But first of all, I'm just gonna use a practice piece of cladding to make sure I've got a drill bit that's the right size. So this is the best that I could find. So I'm just gonna test that out, see if it fits okay. Okay, so there's a hole, let's see if it fits. Which, yeah, perfect. 
We haven't connected them up yet, but we've just got a positive wire coming from the lights to the light switch. And then it will go from the light switch to the fuse box. So we're just using a little bit of electrical tape to stake all of this positive wire up against the inside of the front of this cupboard here. Okay, so we've just run the wire down the side there and I'm just going to cut it to length before we put some connectors on to connect it to the fuse box. So we are going to run the wire right along the bottom of this piece of wood so we don't see it. The tape is a temporary solution just to hold it while I cut it and put the ends on and until we actually get some kind of thing, whatever we're going to use to attach everything. So we've just connected all the lights, we've just left them hanging for a minute and we're going to fix them into position later on. First of all, we'll just need to connect this negative wire going from the fuse box to the first battery here. So now I need to put in the two amp fuse. And now we need to close the connection on the positive wire here. Now, fingers crossed, the lights are going to work. <laughs> yeah. How awesome is that? Yay. Okay, so that's most of the electrics done now. Um, <laughs> yes, we are very happy we have lights. I'm sure. I'm well happy. <laughs> um, next time, we need to do the cladding on the ceiling. So I know we've wired these up now, but don't worry that only on so that we can take them off. We're just making sure the connection <laughs> is it's all good, you know, before we fix it for the cladding. Yeah, so that's fine. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see more and we will see you next time. Bye.